I recently did a video about 5 video game mascots and the lands and cores that they could be in. And since then, I have had thousands of people express interest in me doing 5 more mascots. So, here they are. Now, before we begin, for those who don't already know, lands and cores are organisations that have rings that give their wearers superpowers, and they are powered by different emotions. And in order to wield one of these rings, you have to have a strong connection to the emotion that powers it. And these different lands and cores are love, fear, avarice, will, hope, compassion, and rage. And there are also the lands and cores of the black lands and core of death and the white lands and core of life and the newest lantern core of the ultraviolet light. Though no one knows exactly what emotion powers this particular lantern core, it is believed to be shame. And with that out of the way, let's get on with it. Raiden Raiden is the protector of Earthrealm and the god of thunder. Now, being a god automatically means that he has an indomitable amount of willpower. All gods do, after all. But I think a better lantern core for him is hope. After all, he never gives up no matter what happens, and he never loses faith in the Elder Gods. Even when they all but abandoned him in Mortal Kombat 9, he still believes in them, and he risks everything on the hope that they will empower him when he lets Shao Kahn merge Elfram with his realm. And his faith is rewarded. And even though some might say that knowing without a doubt the gods exist does make it easier to believe in them, well, knowing something is real and believing in them are two very different things. After all, we all know that politicians are real, but that doesn't mean that we believe in them. But Raiden's faith never wavers. Even in Mortal Kombat 11, he never gave up hope, and even sacrificed his own life to save Liu Kang, because he had hope that Liu Kang could be a better protector than he is. And that ability to keep on believing and sacrificing everything because of his faith is what makes him a symbol of hope to Earthrealm. Of course, this is the normal Raiden we're talking about, after all, Raiden has been corrupted by Shinnok's energies in the past, and when he is corrupted, well that's a different story, as he becomes an inferno of rage, lashing out at any and all who have ever attacked Earthrealm or would even think about attacking Earthrealm. And in this state, he is clearly better suited for the Red Lanterns of Rage, as it matches both his temper and his lust for vengeance on those who have wronged Earthrealm. No longer will I simply defend Earthrealm. I will seek out and destroy all who threaten it. No mercy will be shown, no quarter given. Some might say that fear would work, as he obviously inspires great fear in this state, but I think his blistering rage definitely marks him for the Red Lanterns, because it just makes more sense. Jack Now, Jack starts out as a mute hero who comes across as being quite a strong and noble sword. But then, in the second game, he is abducted and experimented on for two years, being continually bombarded with Dark Eco. And this changes him, which is quite understandable, and makes him a darker person. He is still a hero, but he's a hero with an attitude, who has Dark Eco powers and is able to transform into the Dark Jack. And because of this, I think he either belongs in the Red Lantern Core of Rage, or the Yellow Lantern Core of Fear. Now, he's clearly a strong contender for rage, as he's clearly seething with anger. I'm gonna kill Praxis! So the Red Lantern Corps seems right, as he certainly has a lot of anger, and he definitely wants to get revenge on the Baron for experimenting on him. Which makes perfect sense. It's not only experiments, but the fact that he stole two years of his life. I mean, who wouldn't want revenge after that? But the thing that makes me lean towards the Sinestro Lantern Corps is that he does inspire a great amount of fear. In fact, the people are so scared of him that in the third game, he actually has to leave the capital city because people are terrified of him and his power. This dark eco freak is dangerous. Now drop the cargo! Which 100% qualifies him for a yellow lantern ring. So this is another one that could go either way. But personally, I'm actually leaning towards the Sinestro Lantern Corps. Although rage does make a lot of sense, because of Jack's personality, I feel like fear works for him better. The way that Jack talks and intimidates people comes across as anger at first, but I don't think it's actually because he's angry. I think it's more because he wants to scare and intimidate those around him. He wants them to fear him so they'll respect him, and this will stop them from trying to hurt him as he's been hurt before, at least in theory. And I feel that the way he acts and the things that he does is more a case of calculated power rather than wild outbursts of anger. But like I say, this can go either way, so you may disagree. But I think a Sinestro Core Ring would just work out better for him. Daxter 
Now this little guy is the comic relief in the video games, and his main attribute is that he's a bit of an idiot and kinda greedy. And sadly that's about it, as we never really see any other emotions from him, apart from him being snooty and rude to people and being terrified, neither of which are particularly useful for picking a Lantern Corps. So this means that his only real choice is the Orange Lantern Corps of Avarice, as greed is the most of these Lantern Corps emotions that we ever see from Daxter. Now this Lantern Corps normally goes to bad guys, which Daxter is definitely not, as he has done good deeds, such as spending two years of his life looking for his friend Jack and helping to rescue him, and also helping him on the rest of his adventures. But even taking this into account, greed is his main quality, and although he may not be a bad guy, being greedy doesn't necessarily mean you are bad, it just means you're kinda greedy. And for Daxter, Avarice really is the only choice that we have. Lara Croft Now, Lara Croft has faced impossible odds, from crash landing on a hostile island, to fighting immortals and thousands of cultists, she has fought overwhelming odds that would break a weaker person, even overcoming the loss of her parents from a young age. And all of this has only made her resolve stronger. Like a sword going through the fire of a forge, life has only tempered her, making her stronger and more willful. And that's why I think that the Green Lantern Corps of Willpower is the one for her. Now this is mainly because she seems to just have such good control over her emotions that she doesn't really embody any of the other Lantern Corps. Yes, she does scare others, though only really villains, as good guys don't really have anything to fear from her. And to a certain extent, she does inspire hope, so those Lantern Corps did deserve some consideration. But even still, she doesn't really embody those emotions in the way that she embodies willpower, as Lara Croft is literally a walking, talking action heroine, who is made of a willpower that is as strong as steel. And while it does have to be mentioned that she has spent some of her life living in her father's shadow, and actually basing her own decisions on what she thinks her father would do, rather than what she wants to do, it does also need to be mentioned that she did eventually overcome this, and decide to live her life based on what she wanted, rather than what she thinks her deceased father would want. So again, her willpower has only become stronger, which only reinforces that the Green Lantern Corps is the one for her. And really, I can't see any other choice other than this Lantern Corps, she just belongs in the Emerald Core. Link Now I've had a lot of requests to go over Link's Lantern Corps, and quite a lot of suggestions. Some people have suggested love due to his love for the princess, and the romance that he has had with the other guardian. However, I don't feel that his love is strong enough for this. I mean, it's not really clear whether he's even in love with the princess, or if she just loves him. And unfortunately, the other guardian is no longer alive, so no romance can really continue with them. But in either case, I think it's quite clear that love really isn't his strongest emotion. Yes, he does have a lot of love in his heart, I'm quite sure of that but it's not his strongest, most overwhelming emotion, so he's not quite right for the Star Sapphire Lantern Corps. Now, quite a lot of people have suggested willpower as well, which does make a lot of sense. Although, to be fair, pretty much everyone on this list could be considered for the Green Lantern Corps. After all, you can't do the types of things that these heroes have done without having a great amount of willpower. But even still, it does make a lot of sense for Link. But I think there is another Lantern Corps that better suits him, and that is, of course, Hope. After all, he is pretty much the embodiment of hope for the whole of Hyrule. He is the ultimate hero who has saved God alone knows how many people over the years. And by years, I mean centuries, since the real Link is actually an immortal hero's soul. And when one of the Links dies, this soul just goes on into another young boy's body, and then that boy becomes the new Link. And this is actually a rather amazing story, and it's a legend like this that is exactly the type of thing that inspires hope in all the people of the land. Though the only problem with this is that Link is, technically speaking, an immortal, which does make him a contender for the White Lantern Core of Life. After all, what is a bigger representative of life than immortality? But he also qualifies for the White Lantern Core because he continually fights for life, and he is all that stands in the way of the total extinction of life on Hyrule. And those that aren't killed by Ganon will just be subjugated by his evil, meaning that Link is actually fighting for both life and freedom. Which sounds a little bit corny, I know, but it is true, and it is what makes him a perfect candidate for the White Lanterns. Now, it is true that he could easily be in hope as well, as he's clearly the ultimate symbol of hope in Hyrule. So this one can go either way, and it is up for you to decide. But personally, I'm kind of leaning towards hope. 
He may be an immortal who fights for life and freedom, but really that only adds to the symbol of hope that he is. And it's even been said in Link's diary that the reason that he never talks is because he has so many eyes on him and that he feels he must be a strong and silent role model for others to try and inspire them to do better, because him talking would lessen that. And this of course also implies that he knows what a symbol of hope he is and that he has embraced it. But in truth, either one would work, life or hope. But really, I think hope makes more sense. And that is the five lantern cores of five more video game mascots. Do you agree with the lantern core choices that I made? Or would you have put these characters in different lantern cores? And what other characters from video games would you like to see in future videos? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.